I made a lamp. Some of you may remember that several months ago I turned a perfectly good working motorcycle engine into a pile of useless parts. One of those useless parts is a crankshaft. I also have a bit of a lighting deficiency in my office. To a normal person this would seem like two separate issues, but with the power of imagination I have turned a crankshaft into a free lamp. And by free, of course, I mean not at all free. A crankshaft lamp is a pretty straightforward thing. You just turn the crankshaft on its side, put a light bulb at the top, and plug it in. But the challenge, as always, is in the details. The main issue is getting the electricity to the lamp sockets. Lamps require electricity, unless I want this to be an oil burning lamp, which I don't. The easiest way to do this is just have a wire dangling from the bulb down the side of the crankshaft. This is too lazy, even for me. No, the correct thing to do is run the wire through the center of the crankshaft, but of course there is no solid center of a crankshaft. The journals are offset by definition, kind of, otherwise it wouldn't be a crankshaft. Now, part of this problem is solved for us already by the good people at Honda. You see, you need to get oil to the connecting rods, and the way they do this is by drilling a passage through the crankshaft from the main bearings to the connecting rod bearings. The main bearings get oil from the oil pump. That oil is pushed through the hole drilled in the crankshaft to this hole here, which is where the connecting rod is connected. After the hole is drilled at the factory, they shove in a ball and sort of smash the steel around it so that it can't come out. Unfortunately, this ball is hardened steel, which makes it super difficult to drill through. I verified this by hitting it with my center punch, which sent sparks flying and ruined my center punch. So let's reconsider our approach. The crankshaft does not actually have a passage all the way through it. It has a passageway connecting this main bearing to this connecting rod bearing, another passage between this main and this journal, another one here, and another one here. Inside the engine, you just need to get the oil from the main journals to the connecting rod journals so they don't drill a passage all the way through. This means that we have to drill the rest of the way. Here, 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 and here. Since we can't drill through the ball, we're going to have to drill through the other side and then just kind of pop the ball out. This will be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. The correct way to do this would be to weld up a fixture to hold the crankshaft at the correct angle, then I could put it in a drill press and make with the drilling. But since the crankshaft is an odd shape, and since I'd need to come in from two directions two times each, this makes for a complicated fixture. So I opted to drill by hand, knowing that it would almost certainly result in one, possibly two broken drill bits. This crankshaft is case hardened. It's not hardened all the way through, it just has a thin candy shell of hardness. I'm not exactly sure how they do this, but it seems that the center of the journals inside these holes here are also hardened. On top of that, the hole I drilled was not exactly in line with these holes. This means that my drill bit did not exactly hit the center of this cross-drilled hole, which means it was hitting hardened steel on one side and no steel on the other side. And I'm just jamming this drill bit in the hole with all the finesse of a monkey humping a football. Broken drill bits are not great because then you have to get the broken end out of the hole, so I had to try to break the bit by hitting the side of it with a punch and a hammer. After a while, it became clear that I would not be making it all the way through to the other side of the ball. I would be slightly off. So I went back to the ball side and decided to just drill to the side of the ball. This led to another broken drill bit. And then it was back to the other side to try to get the hole far enough in to get to the back side of the broken drill bit and hammer that out. After all that, I did finally make it through. I got the ball and the broken drill bit out, and I had a passageway all the way through this one section. So I did the same thing over here, same story, pretty much. But in the end, I had two passages drilled through, and uh, let's see, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven broken drill bits. Seven. Ah, ah, ah. That meant I was through here and here, and all I needed to do was drill through this bit here and this bit here. There were a couple of problems with that. One, I can't really drill through this side because there is a big-ass gear in the way. And I can't come in the other side because that's where the stupid ball is. Also, even if I do get these drilled through, I have to fish a wire all the way through this thing, which is a bit of a challenge, considering that I'll have to make a 45-degree turn inside the crankshaft here, and then again here, and then a third time here, and I have no idea how I'm going to do that. So, we're going to cheat a little bit. We're going to have the wire come in here and then sort of plop out where I'll just run it up against the outside of the journal and then back in this hole here and then the rest of the way through. Looking at other crankshaft lamps online, you can see that most people just drape their power line down the side or sort of wrap it around weirdly, which means even my half-assed approach is still better than what most people do. 
Another complication is that the crankshaft doesn't sit nicely on the table. It has two pointy ends and lamps usually have a large flat end on the bottom. This is not a problem because the engine also has this big gear on the back of the clutch basket. I could have maybe used the rotor for the generator that normally goes on the side of the crank, but I like this gear better. I would, however, need to lathe out an adapter. For that, I have a chunk of stainless steel lying around. I cut the outside down with the help of my makeshift auto feed. Then I went all lathe lathe on the inside to make a taper to match up with the crankshaft end. This all fits nicely and was just snug enough to keep everything in line so I don't have a lamp leaning to one side. Then it was just a matter of welding it all together. There it is, a lamp. But we're missing a few things. This will be an indoor lamp, but it will still get rusty over time. I don't really want to paint it, it has a really nice look to it, so I got some gibbs. People use this sometimes to protect bare steel things. People in the hot rod community use it on bare cars. I think you're supposed to rub it in with a towel, but I just blasted it on and then wiped it down. I cut the head off a bolt that had the same threads as the top of the crankshaft. The lamp socket had a similar thread that was close enough to just sort of jam the bolt in there. I put on some thread locker and put it together. Usually the lamp wires come through the center, but I'm coming in from the side, so I drilled a hole through the side. I started to wire this with some wire I had lying around. The gauge was correct for the current, but I remembered that automotive wire is usually rated for 50 volts, less with alternating current. So I found some wire rated for household voltage and for the current I'll be using. I got individual conductor wire so I could more easily fish it through the crankshaft. I could have used a thinner gauge since the bulb I'll be using will not be drawing too much current, but if someone were to install an old incandescent bulb or something that draws more current, it could maybe set my house on fire. I could avoid that problem by putting a circuit breaker in the cord, but I'll just use the thinner stuff. I threw on a couple of zip ties just to temporarily keep everything in place, and I wired it up. Just before I plugged it into test, I remembered that bulb sockets are supposed to be wired a certain way. The outside part here is supposed to be the neutral, and the little nipple inside is the hot lead. I got out my multimeter to check, and I was wrong. 50-50 chance, and I got it wrong. But it was a quick fix. I just swapped the wires, double-checked before plugging it in, and it works. Lamp. The wires need to be cleaned up a little bit, some proper crimps and some heat shrink, along with a little bit of a zip tie at the base. I had also added some rubber feet to the bottom so it doesn't gouge every table I set it on. And then it's just the lampshade. That is too big. That is too big. Smaller lampshade. That is definitely too small. Somebody get me a medium lampshade. That is not bad. A little too gray. What else we got? That's really black. You know what? We'll figure out the lampshade later. This is good enough for now. There it is, a lamp, an incredibly heavy lamp, and it didn't cost me a thing. Should have made this out of an old Porsche crankshaft. I could probably sell it on Bring a Trailer for $30,000. It used to be that you had to impress people to get people to watch your show. Now you just have to impress the algorithm. So do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. All hail the algorithm. Do you really love the lamp, or are you just saying it because you saw it? I love lamp. I love lamp.